Hello cousins near and far, and welcome to my channel, Ancestral Spotlight. Today, I present to you the story of an ancient family. Join me as we piece together the many tales of the origin of Naismith, coupled with historical fact for context. Going back in time, we will wade through over 800 years of history, arriving at present day, and learn about the next chapter in store for all Naismiths. Naismith. The origins of this ancient family are rooted in the events of King Alexander III of Scotland. Alexander, of the House of Dunkeld, became king at the tender age of eight. During his minority, Robert Bruce, fifth Lord of Annandale, served as his regent. At that time, Robert was recognized as a Tanist to the Scottish throne. A Tanist is defined as, quote, the heir apparent to a Celtic chief, typically the most vigorous adult of his kin, elected during the chief's lifetime." End quote. It is said that in the time of Alexander III, a young Scotsman fought beside the king on the eve of the Battle of Largs, fought the 2nd of October, 1263, on the Firth of Clyde, near Largs, between the forces of Norway and Scotland, King Alexander's sword and armor was in need of repair. There was not a good smith to be found, and so this young Scotsman took to the forge with no particular skill in smithing and set to work on the king's repairs. During the battle, King Alexander's sword broke, and it was this same young Scotsman who appeared beside the king and fought bravely at his side. The Battle of Largs was a sweeping victory for Scotland and laid the foundation for the reacquisition of the Hebride Islands and the Isle of Man in the Treaty of Perth three years later. After the battle, King Alexander recognized the young Scotsman's bravery and said of him, quote, Though he is nay a smith, he is a brave gentleman indeed. End quote. The young Scotsman was knighted and henceforth was known as Nay Smith. The armorial bearings are shown as a drawn sword symbolizing bravery between two broken hammers. The motto, Nan Arte Sed Marte, and it means not by knavery, but by bravery. The Naismiths are believed to be descended from the ancient Strathclyde Bretons, a people mixed of Gaelic and Celts, whose original territories range from Lancashire northward to the south banks of the River Clyde. The Naismiths held lands in Tweeddale, just east of Lanarkshire. Peebles is the county town. It was here in Peeblesshire that the male line of John Baird of Paso, son of Sir Gilbert Baird of Paso and brother of Andrew Baird of Lavoriglo, who purchased the lands of Ahmedin in 1539, extinguished in 1526 upon his death. By his wife, Johnette Scott, John Baird of Paso left two daughters, Elizabeth and Janet, who became his co-heiresses. Quote, Sir Michael Naismith, Chamberlain of the Archbishop of St. Andrews, obtained the lands of Paso and Glenarth in 1544 by right of his wife, Elizabeth, daughter and heiress of John Baird of Paso. The Bairds have ever been a loyal and gallant family. Sir Gilbert, father of John Baird, fell at Flodden in 1513 in defense of his king. The royal area of Paso Crag is on the family estates, and the lore worn by Queen Mary and presented by her son, James VI, to James Naismith, the royal falconer, is still preserved as a family heirloom. During the Troubles in Scotland, in the reign of Mary, Sir Michael Naismith espoused the cause of the unfortunate queen. He fought under her banner at Langside in 1568. He was banished and the estates were seized by the Regent Moray, but after the restoration of peace, the Naismiths regained their property." End quote. The Naismiths, long loyal to the royal house of Stuart, had a second origin story set in the time of Queen Mary's great-grandfather, King James III. Quote, 
In the troublous times which prevailed in Scotland before the union of the crowns, the feuds between the king and the barons were almost constant. In the reign of James III, the House of Douglas was the most prominent and ambitious. The Earl not only resisted his liege lord, but entered into a combination with the King of England, from whom he received a pension. He was declared a rebel, and his estates were confiscated. He determined to resist the royal power and cross the border with his followers. He was met by the Earl of Angus, the Maxwells, the Johnstons, and the Scots. In one of the engagements which ensued, the Douglases appeared to have gained the day when the ancestor of the Naismiths, who fought under the royal standard, took refuge in the smithy of a neighboring village. The smith offered him protection, disguised him as a hammerman with a leather apron in front, and asked him to lend a hand at his work. While thus engaged, a party of Douglas partisans entered the smithy. They looked with suspicion on the disguised hammerman who, in his agitation, struck a false blow with the sledgehammer, which broke the shaft in two. Upon this, one of the pursuers rushed at him, calling out, Yer nay smith! The stalwart hammerman turned upon his assailant, and wrenching a dagger from him, speedily overpowered him. The smith himself, armed with a big hammer, effectually aided the overpowering and driving out the Douglas men. A party of the royal forces led them against the rebels, and converted what had been a temporary defeat into a victory. A grant of lands was bestowed upon him for his service. His armorial bearings consisted of a hand dexter with a dagger between two broken hammer shafts, and there they remain to this day." End quote. For clarity, these were the Red Douglases. With the rise of Sir Michael Naismith of Paso, the Naismiths of Paso became the head of the family. We see the union of Naismith and Baird reflected in the quartered family crest, featuring both the Naismith arms and the Baird boar. Sir Michael Naismith fought with Robert the Bruce, grandson of the region of Alexander III and Tanist. During his fight to the Scottish throne, the Bruce had a friend and ally, James Douglas, at his side. James Douglas was known as the Black Douglas, the Earls of Douglas were known as the Black Douglases, set occasionally at odds with their kin, the Red Douglases, Earls of Angus, and today represented by the Dukes of Hamilton. We see the grandson of the Black Douglas, James, the seventh Earl of Douglas, made the first Earl of Avondale. Avondale Castle in Lanarkshire is also known as Strathaven Castle. It was built around 1350 by the Bairds, the Bears of Avondale were an ancient and powerful Berg Scots clan, believed to be of Norman French descent. These were a different family line of Bairds from those of Achmedin, the chief branch of Clan Baird. The Naismiths of Paso were created baronets of Nova Scotia. They held lands in Tweeddale and Peeblesshire, where the ruins of the Tower of Paso remain today. Quote, Among the intermarriages of the family were those of the Bruces of Lethen, the Stuarts of Traquahar, the Murrays of Stanhope, the Pringles of Clifton, the Murrays of Phillips Hall, the Keiths of the Earl Marshall's family, the Andersons of St. Germain's, the Marjorie Banks of Lees, and others. In the 14th century, a branch of the Naismiths of Paso settled at Netherton, near Hamilton. They bought an estate and built a residence. The land adjoined part of the Duke of Hamilton's estate, and the house was not far from the palace. There the Naismiths remained until the reign of Charles II. The king, or his advisers, determined to introduce Episcopy, or as some thought, Roman Catholicism, into the country, and to enforce it at the point of sword. The Naismiths had always been loyal until now, but to be cleft by sword and pricked by spear into a religion which they disbelieved was utterly hateful to the Netherton Naismiths. Being Presbyterians, they held to their own faith. They were prevented from using their churches, and they accordingly met on the moors or in unfrequented places of worship. The dissenting Presbyterians assumed the name Covenanters. 
Hamilton was almost the center of the movement. The Covenanters met, and the King's forces were ordered to disperse them, hence the internecine war that followed. There were Naismiths on both sides, Naismiths for the King, and Naismiths for the Covenant." End quote. In 1683, John Naismith arrived in America and settled in Mammoth County, New Jersey alongside his allied kin, John Baird of Mammoth. The families lived side by side for generations in America, in New Jersey, and along their trek southwest to secure their foothold in the country. The Naismiths are proud of their Scottish heritage, and reunions over the years have sought to preserve their history. The Naismith Genealogical Society was founded in 1983 and was active well into the 2010s, although not as active today. Many of the founding members continue in an online capacity. The Naismith Family History Group found on Facebook. As of 2021, the ancient and honorable family of Naismith has joined the Clan Baird Society worldwide, based in Scotland, the oldest and largest Clan Baird organization in the world, as allied kin. Among the many Clan Bear Society worldwide affiliates found in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Africa, and the USA. As of June 2021, the family of Naismith has become the newest official affiliate of the Clan Bear Society worldwide. This act will preserve the name of Naismith and the heritage of this ancient and mighty family. And through this alliance, grant a powerful voice for the Naismiths to be heard around the world and a platform to stand and one day reclaim their titles. Quote, people who are truly strong lift others up. People who are truly powerful bring others together. End quote. The leadership of Richard Baird of Rickerton, Urey, and Lockwood, commander of Clan Baird and president of the Clan Bear Society worldwide strives to bring these great and ancient families of Baird and Naismith into a bright and prosperous future together. Thank you for watching. If you could please like and subscribe to my channel, it would be greatly appreciated as it helps with the algorithms. Happy hunting, my friends.